Yeah, even Louis agrees with me. Louis just shook his head there. Even Louis agrees with me. Louis knows where the bread's buttered. <laughs> okay, right. Um, yeah, but I just felt this was more of a neutral site game between these two sides. Um, it didn't feel like we were testing the waters like we did with Detroit the night, the night previously. Um, but yeah, I ended up with a really, another very tightly, closely fought game. Another 2 1 victory. But this time in regulation. Montreal cocked up the extra attacker. And you had a power play as well towards the end of it. Why you didn't just go for it then? Anyway, let's get to it. So, County Fagan scored a goal and assist to lead Toronto's offence and extend the team's winning streak to 10. 10. It's actually gone more now since we've since the, now since this episode's released. But 10. Wish. Who's going to be the ones that's going to end that streak for Toronto? Wow. Um, yeah, they got 2 1 victory over Montreal uh, at PG Pets Arena. So the game hosted in partnership with the Penguins as part of PSH Takeo Weekend. So you, you even paired up with the league and yet you didn't show out. You do? One sec. Go over here. Go over here. So you paired up with the PHL for this game and your lot did not show out. You. Iceberg. Right. You can't say you want a team. And then when you're given the opportunity to show us the commitment, you then bottle it. Thank you, Louis! Thank you, Louis. You're being so helpful today. You know you technically should not be up here. You're being Louis's being so helpful. Louis agrees with me. Well, Louis agrees with me. You so you can't partner up with the leagues. And then, oh, we're not going to have people come out. Shoddy. Shoddy. In fact, my Sharks were at Pittsburgh in the week leading up to it. You didn't promote the game. You did not promote the game. Shoddy. That is shoddy work. Oh, it makes my blood even more bored. The Minnesota got left out this weekend. Anyway, shoddy. Absolute shoddy. So, just, Right. So, I had an attendance of 8,850 fans. Um, and it's the largest crowd ever watched in professional women's hockey in Pittsburgh. You, no, I've, I've got nothing I can say about that. You, 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 you can't boast that when we've already seen elsewhere that, uh, that in the PHR that we've seen bigger attendances than that. So, you can boast that all you want, but it's not proved that you could deserve a team. Anywho, let's get to the game. Fagan delivered her best offensive game of the season on St. Patrick's Day, highlighted by her third goal of the season, which held as the game winner at 6-11 of the second period. Blair Turnbull forced a turnover in the Montreal zone, and with the puck on her stick, the captain found his line mate Maggie Connors with a pass inside the blue line as she joined the play. Connors fired a shot that sailed high and wide but was tracked by Fagan, who had skated deep into the zone for support. As the defender grabbed the puck off the end board near the corner and quickly snapped sharp angle shot that appeared to surprise the goal center and Marie Desbien. Before Desbien could cover the short side post, the puck deflected off the body and into the net to get to the 2-1 lead. Flagon also drew a secondary assist on Hannah Miller's sixth goal of the season that opened the scoring at just 7-11 of the first period. Serenas won an offensive zone 
pace off that gave Toronto a possession down low. Uh, when Montreal tried to clear it, uh, Flagon pinched along the side bar boards and sent it back deep to Natalie Spooner. In the corner facing the board, Spooner sh shielded the puck with her body and delivered a backhand pass directly onto Miller's stick. The board was wide open at the right dot and wrist a laser pass at the end. Montreal tied the game in the first period with a highlight reel goal by Kristen O'Neill, who secured her first of the season at 13.42. O'Neill playing on the team's top line in place of the injured Marie-Philippe Poulin, grabbed a loose puck that had been cleared by linemate Claire Dalton to the attacking blue line, the centre street down the left side and with Nicky Paul and Ryan move ripped a shot bar down over the glove at Kristen Campbell. That shot was the only one that would beat Campbell who made 17 saves to record a 12th win of the season in 11th straight. Des Bien made 24 saves in that loss. Toronto now has to beat Montreal in all four of their head-to-heads this year, including three times regulation during their 10-game win streak. Montreal has now lost a season-high three straight games with two of them coming against Toronto beginning with a 3-0 loss on March the 8th. Those three points gave Toronto 33 points for the season and boosts them into a tie with our Minnesota and from the standings ahead of Montreal now third place on 30 points. Up next for Toronto is they would go and host Boston at Madison United Centre on Wednesday night, March the 20th. Uh, while Montreal, they are back in action until March 24th uh, when they'll be taking on our Minnesota at Exeter Energy Centre. That's going to be a key game for your Minnesota because that's our last game before the break. With Toronto being red hot as they are, it's going to be very important to get those three points in the bag. Okay, we are going on to first game quotes and notes. So we'll do the quotes first. So for Toronto, uh, here's what defender Canny Fagan uh, has to say about her goal and the atmosphere. It was really cool. I think for me, I was just trying to keep the puck in. I was pinching down trying to see where the puck was going to go. It just popped out and I was just thinking get it on net. Having an exit like that, a crowd like that, our team has had so much cool support and I think it was just really fun and cool support to have that re reaction to the goal. Troy's head coach Troy Ryan on 10 straight wins said the whole season started off we had that first game I think there was a lot of nerves but the group is good to so good to go up the ice the league has done a great job setting us up success I think it's honestly just sticking with it the basics the way we play is physical we have a good combination of offense and defense and I think that gives us a chance to win every night uh, Campbell Ingalls did a great job dealing with some of the adversity that she had at the start of the year and finding a way to play with confidence and the composure that she's had. Now to Montreal, this is what for Laura Stacy described her Pittsburgh experience. The crowd was awesome. We had a community event yesterday and the people were great. This organisation welcomed us with open arms. And here's what Montreal head coach Corey Chevrolet had to stay on the game. And the fans were great out here today. I think they saw a good show. Uh, the Penguins organization has always been good for our game. I liked our game today. I am really happy for Kristen O'Neill and that she was able to score. She has been relentless all season. She's gritty and plays a good defensive game. Points notes. We talked about the attendance already. 8,850. Uh, attended at PJ Hate Arena, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's low. That's low. Um, for a neutral site game so far. Um, does it beat ours that we had at the end of February? Now, of course, ours was not in an NHL arena, but I'm just going to quickly bring up just for comparison. Because like I say, that is a, that attendance is shocking. 
when you're look at when you are a potential market that could maybe one day house a team itself. I mean, if that was a regular PHR game, fair dues, understandable, but it was not. This was a special event, opportunity for Pittsburgh to come out and show, and they did not do it. So, make that what you will. So, let's just see how that fared against our neutral site game, which we had at the end of February. Yeah, okay, I mean, ours wasn't good, but uh, cause we had 2018 10 3M Arena uh, at Mount City, Minneapolis, but that is not an NHL venue. But in terms of the, of the neutral site games hosted in NHL venues so far, that's the lowest. That is the lowest. The, what, the Battle of Bay Street sold out in Toronto. Uh, the neutral site game that's going to happen in Montreal in April, that has... That, wait for it, Louis. You go, come here, you go, hear this, Louis. That sold out. In 20 minutes going on sale. And, uh, these two markets really have got on board, Louis. These two markets really have... Just leave him there for a moment. He's fighting one of his pity. These two markets really have taken this league to heart. They really have established themselves. And, um, yeah. But in terms of the neutral site, sites held in NHL Barnes, that's the lowest. That's the lowest. And that's shocking. That's shocking, especially this is a market that clearly wants to get a team, but you're not showing us why you want one. Uh, let's carry on. So the three stars. First star, Kelly Flagon. Second star, Kristen O'Neill. Third star, Kristen Campbell. The shot uh, 26 18 in favour of Toronto, who led the first 9 to 6, second 8 to 5, and the third 9 to 7. Montreal's 18 shots on goal are the fewest the team has recorded so far in a game this season. Three players tied for the individual lead in shots. Toronto's Jocelyn Laroque and Sarah Nurse and Montreal's Laura Stacey all had five shots on goal. Toronto was 0 for 1 on the man advantage while Montreal was 0 for 2 and of course no jailbreak goals. Flygun doubled her season point total to four and now has three goals and will assist. Natalie Spooner's assist extended her point streak to four games. Two, go two goals for assist. She's now tied with three fleet blend for second in league scoring with 17 points and one behind Alex Carpenter of New York. Halavia has scored in back-to-back -back games and has three goals in her last four contests. Blair Turnbull extends her point streak to six games. That's one goal, five assists, which is tied for the longest in the PHL this season. Maggie Connors has three points, two goals, one assist in the last four games. Uh, O'Neill scored her first goal on her 21st shot of the season. She now has two points in two games since uh, centering Montreal's top line. Uh, Claire Dalton's assist came in her return from a four-game absence due to injury. Uh, she recorded a hat-trick in her last game on February the 24th against Ottawa. And Ambrose recorded an assist for the second straight game and is now tied for third in scoring among defenders with 10 points. Campbell's 70 saves are the fewest she's managed in a win this season. Oh, this was Toronto's 10th win when scoring the first goal of the game. They have scored first 11 times. Neither of these top two teams in the third period. Louis Ice Cream! Let's do it again! Louis, get me Mr. Whippy! <laughs> Oh, I did this yesterday when I was, when I was doing a teleport bit with Howler. <laughs> From about this time. Louie! Oh, I think it's gone, Louie. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Well, that's the first. That's the first time it's happened on Purple Rain. <laughs> Sorry, you can, you can see what I can see now. I spoke. Go and be a good boy and go get him back because it's probably because probably we've missed it. You can if you can see what I can. Louis currently smug. She's facing the wind. You can see what I can see now. It's hilarious. Go get him. Bring him back. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to quite, be quite frequent now. Now the ice cream man. It barely comes down this street. That's two days in a row now. How right, about the same time? Same time. Oh, that's a weird coincidence. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Louie, you didn't my scares of Mr. Whippy. Oh. Oh, if only Shark was here, he would have gone there with you. <laughs> oh god right where were we sorry i've lost the place now <laughs> sorry the ice cream van strapped us i mean i don't i don't know if you can hear it on the um if you are to hear it but uh, obviously i obviously i could outside the window outside the window uh i don't know that's going to pick up on the um on the shut of the uh, when we go to production, but that was quite hilarious. And I have now lost my place. Where were we? I didn't really have that many notes left to do. Oh my god, right? Should we go from Toronto's um, right? We'll go from this was Toronto's 10th win. That's where we'll go from, right? <laughs> this was Toronto's 10th win when scoring the first goal. They scored first 11 times. Neither of the league's top two teams... Ah, this is where we're up to. Neither of the league's top two teams in third period of Ben scored a goal in the final frame. Well, technically, they weren't the league's top two teams because Minnesota is in first place. I know. Offence, Louis. Offence. Because we were in the number, the number one team going uh, going into that game, and we still were after that game. All right, this was the league's second and third teams, top teams. All right, that's offensive. Oh god. Um, Toronto has won five of its six one goal games. Um, this was Montreal's fourth loss in eleven one goal games this season. Toronto has thirty people for the season. To tie with our Minnesota. Montreal now is in sole position of third place with 30 points, eight ahead of the fourth place team, Boston. And uh, there we go. So <laughs> it's been a right eventful one today, hasn't it? <laughs> and we're not going to blame it on Louis. No, I'm not gonna blame it on you, darling. I'm gonna blame it on the ice cream, my ban. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna blame it on. I'm not gonna blame it on you because you've been helpful for a chat. You've been lovely. <laughs> Despite the fact you're only supposed to be there, so I've got something nice to keep an eye on while I'm having to deal with this pesky bird. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been quite a but we're not gonna pin it on Louis. We'll pin it on the ice cream ban. No, I think we will blame Louis on. She didn't manage to get us a Mr. Whippy. But that's quite 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 a curse because that's two days in a row when I've been up when I've been up here recording and the ice cream bands roll past at around exactly this kind of time. I mean I was doing a tour with the yesterday with Howler and it caught it it came. So I was like, Well what was all? It had been quite a while since I had that. That's two in a row. It's like bosses, Louie. Like bosses. Anyway, um yes yeah, so that concludes that could we better wrap it up now. Let's go let's go ham. Going to be a handful. That concludes our look back on PHL Takeover in Pittsburgh, which saw Toronto win 2 1. <laughs>